Welcome back everyone to another tutorial. Today I just want to show you how to set up a cutscene in an easy way using Playmaker. And the end result will look something like this, where you hit a trigger, your characters will be unable to do anything, and you can go through like this sequence of camera movement and conversation between enemies and also control a part of the environment by Playmaker by creating yeah, such an effect like this one and afterwards also then just continue with the game and afterwards you will be enabling your character again to move and instead of explaining step by step how to make it I was thinking it would be a good idea just to show you each step and the effect it has in game so let's go into the scene view so the whole sequence which you just saw is set up in this scene here uh, it's part of the game which i also um, submitted for the game of 2020 uh, game jam and the whole sequence you saw is just controlled by this one fsm and my idea is now just to hit play I'm gonna move targets the character. Of course, I move the character in a different position. And I'm just gonna leave it like this so we can actually see what's going on here. So the character is here, and in the scene here, there is a box collider, which is the trigger. And within my, let's say, um, uh, playmaker, I made two FSMs. You don't really need that actually, but I made two FSM because out of other dialogues, it was optional to actually do the dialogue or not. So once you hit the trigger, it comes like, ah, you want to interact, yes or no. That's why sometimes I make two FSMs. In this case, you would only need one FSM. And you would start off with trigger 2D event with the player. And here it will send then to the other FSM the continuation of the dialogue. But I would just recommend to put here the trigger and then move into it. So what happens once you hit the trigger? Currently, it's just waiting for me to hit the trigger. And oops, I'm in the scene mode. I should go here. And what happens now is the first thing which happens is I you didn't even see it. But the moment I hit the trigger, I just disabled all the properties. So this character has actually a play controller, which is a script, and I disabled it. I also disabled any FSM which are related to movement, for example, the dash, or I can also not shoot anymore. And which is very important, I set the velocity to zero. So I made sure that this character is not moving anymore. Sometimes if you stop the fsms but you're still in the momentum it will keep the momentum so make sure to always let's say zero out the velocity and what i did because it can also play an animation and keep that animation playing so that it keeps on running or jumping i made sure that the right bulls are selected in the animator um, of the player and now this is not the right animator so i made sure that it's back to idle and to go into idle, um, well, to go into idle, there is just some preset of what has to happen. And it has to be grounded, should be true, and is walking is false, right? So that's why I changed it here. I can always change it manually, even if the jump, if I jump into this trigger, I will also just set myself to idle and fall down and then stand there. So this is a very important step in any cutscene to make sure that your moving objects are pretty much solid. The next step, what I'm actually doing is now I press then E, I hear something ahead and I just make a simple camera shift. And I do this by using virtual camera. So there is a Cinemachine package in the ecosystem you can download. And what I do is I set the priority. So usually the priority of the play camera is the highest. And now I just set the enemy conversation camera. So what I have here are a couple of cameras in the scene. 
So you have the player camera, which is always looking at the player. And then I have an enemy conversation, which is looking here. So I put there a different camera. Alternatively, alternatively you could also change, let's say, the follow to some other object. But I just set this up with several cameras because also I want to change the camera size when looking at the rocket later. Right. So this is very simple by just said virtual karma set priority and you can also see the priority here. So now the enemy con conversation has priority 100. And I realized that the, the sound effect might be rather annoying. So we can see it here. And let's just uh, remove that for now so that I actually can hear what I'm doing. So, and what I did now is then for the different conversation, I just used a different, um, yeah, UI. So there is, of course, several UIs. And what I did was just set up different UIs for the player and then also for the enemies, enemy one and enemy two. And within there is, of course, there's always the dialogue text. And so after I shift now to the first one, um, I go to the conversation Hans and with any dialogue function, and this is also a tutorial, please find it above how to set up a dialogue. Um, what I do is always just do use the set text mesh pro, UGI text, and then set the text. And what's important is that I just change the alpha of the right. And this is then the dialogue of this enemy this enemy Hans, which I then highlight. So normally this will always be alpha zero and reset on exit is always mentioned. So I have, let's say three different, if I go here and focus. So this is then in the UI here. And then I also have the Bob and Emily, they're all in the same location within your canvas. Oops, there's the canvas, right? So let's just, uh, Focus back here, whoops. So, and then happens is what I do is I just switch out pressing E and in the next one, I'll just highlight a different one. So dialog Bob and always reset on exit. So even if I cut it off here, it will disappear, right? But of course it's important that I put the cameras back, right? So I just have a conversation between these two enemies here and what I did with these enemies, I also put them just into place and just do the idling. And what I do in the end is that I let this enemy just put it in this walking sequence and I will just delete this enemy or just destroy it. So let's scroll down a little bit. So this conversation again, a conversation. And after the conversation, I do another camera shift because they're saying, hey, we found a rocket outside. Oh no, this is not good. And then I just have a very simple camera shift again. I put the priority to zero for the enemy conversation and to 100 for the player. And you have this kind of smooth transition. And afterwards, I actually shift it outside. And now, of course, outside, the sound is also uh, very, lo <laughs> very loud. So let me just delete that for one second. Um, so we can actually listen to what I'm saying. And what I did here, I put the camera, which is then a bigger size. So it, it looks a little bit more from the distance. So you have this, this shift and then, so this was the camera shift. I go to the rocket camera with 100 and the play camera zero. And every time I also do a, a little wait before then this text box comes. So after two seconds, this text box shows up because the shift pretty much took two seconds to go. Pressing E. I'll just do another, let's say, conversation dialogue sequence here. And that went all very fast. <laughs> but let's have a short look at that. So the rocket exploded. Um, so after the conversation here, what I did, I actually just from the rocket controller, I just copy pasted the main, let's say, uh, factors to make the rocket move. So if you want to set up such a rocket, just check out my last tutorial, find the card above. And what I did, I just added the force, every frame. I played the usual audio. And of course I waited then one second before it then destroys. I play the particle systems 
and I stop on exit, which is very important. And after one second already, I just do the audio stop. So you don't hear the thruster sound anymore. And then I set the velocity on zero for everything. So now I'm actually copying the FSM elements to de destroy the rocket, setting it to zero, spawning a particle effect for the explosion, uh, pretty much just deleting the rocket by just uh, reducing its alpha to zero. And I also, I have a cooldown here of five seconds so that people can actually see the whole, um, yeah, the explosion and everything. Um, and I also create a, a force to spawn um, because what I had, perhaps you missed it, there was an enemy standing next to the rocket, which I spawned earlier in. Um, and I need to check actually where it's, uh, ah, let's see, I create basic enemy uh, and I did it on the spawn enemy. So what I did was during the conversation, I just spawned an enemy here. So it looks like he's conversing with somebody who's in the rocket. And then I have here a another spawn point uh, for which I spawn, let's say, a force field, which bounces then this enemy off. Um, so which is, here's the add force. Here's the destroy. So I'm doing the rocket explosion, but I'm also spawning a force, which is a, now I have to check the force. This is a circle collider pretty much and has a point effector to the, so it has a force magnitude and all, and it's with the collider and rigid body, it just bounces anything away, which is in the target. Collider mass, well, I had everything, the rockets anyway exploded at this point, and there's nothing else here with rigid bodies which could move away. After that, um, the camera will shift back automatically, and the character say, hmm, that didn't sound so good. And we do the usual shift again, rocket camera to zero, play camera to 100, and we wait. And then we just put up the dialogue again, this time with the main character, the blue one, dialogue text is there updated, and the UI canvas alpha, good. And then if I do E, e another text field, um, and then, it's pretty much done and it's, I delete the whole trigger. I, have, I do delete so it's it's now disappeared. That's what I usually do with these kind of events that I just um, destroy them in the end. So let's just go out once more. Um, let's have the dialogue and let's just look at the end here one second because we now missed that. Um, afterwards, this is the important part. I set the property that the enemy con or the player controller, so all the movement scripts are enabled again. Uh, and I did it to, to add a controller also to show this, to have a script in the player. I mean, if you have it all by uh, FSM, which is possible, as you know, or from one of my other tutorials on how to set up a uh, play controller, just have a look at that. And what you do is just then enable the FSM again, which move the uh, character. And in this case, it was then the dash, the shoot, um, the Emily stats I activate again. And I destroy then actually the rocket object totally. And then I destroy self. So that's, let's say, one easy way to set up such a easy sequence. And let's have one more look at it and enjoy it from start to end. And if you get the hang of it, you can easily copy paste more text into it and it becomes um, easier over time to make it. So let's this time actually jump in and just see what happens. As you can see, I zero out the speed and I just drop down into the idle. And I hear something here at, I just said I found a rocket outside. You're not kidding, right? I don't like these kind of jokes. Peter and Dick are at the rocket right now. So now I actually spawn the enemy. Peter and Dick, this can only end up in a disaster. You stay here, I will go and make sure that our rocket is safe. I shortly switch back to Emily and then I go to the character there's a sound again outside um, hey Dick you shouldn't play around with the rocket this uh, enemy here Peter 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 I'm sort of an expert when it comes to these kind of things and now I will start adding the thrust to the rocket let it explode and also spawn the force fields for this one enemy also just 
supplies off. I have a five second wait there. And then I'm just back at the character. Hmm, that didn't sound good. And at the moment I can hit any controller jump. It doesn't work. Ah, well, I suppose I have to find the rocket which they just mentioned. And I'm back in action. And now I can just play the game again. And here I made, let's say, a dialogue, which doesn't, doesn't disable anything I'm doing, but it just says, hey, the monster is still down there. I should avoid them and shoot them with F. So I'm just giving some instructions to this next sequence. And this, oh, ouch, this enemy, uh, <laughs> well, that's also a way to kill it, I suppose. Um, I didn't know that. Is then here, and the other enemy I just actually um, destroyed as well. Because that other enemy, ouch, I should be careful here. Because that other enemy moved ahead to check up on their rocket, which is here, and that's why I made one more sequence here. Hmm, what's that up ahead? I need to get by these lasers. And then I just make it that this one enemy um, is now up here and says everything seems to be okay with our rocket. And then I make that enemy walk there, which is kind of the final enemy in my game here, which you need to avoid. And then you can continue again. Great, so as you can see, there's a lot of variety which you can do with doing these kind of setups with Playmaker. And Playmaker makes it really easy. I think Playmaker really has a power here in making these kind of cutscenes because it's really easy to switch around the cameras and also add the different effects of the environment or change the environment by adding the forces and particle effects and what not. So I hope this gives you a good insight. I didn't go now step by step to create this because I thought it's easier just to go over it and explain what's actually happening in such a cutscene. Well, I hope it's helpful. If you have any comments, just let me know. If you need any help, just join the Discord server. And uh, make sure to subscribe and like the video if you did. And see you all in the next one. Cheers.